Happy Friday, friends. I have COVID-19. I'm quarantining in my lovely house in Chesapeake, Virginia. I am Matt Toomer, and I want to talk about veterans topics. And last week we discussed movies. I've got a lot of great feedback. Um, this week we're going to talk about education. But before we jump into the topic, I want to uh, say hello to a very good friend of mine, Matt Womack. Matt is uh, doing a fundraising event on Facebook. He is doing the No Shave November. Please, 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 it is such a good cause. Go onto his Facebook, contribute. Every little bit helps, and I appreciate you doing it. Thank you. Uh, for today's topic, I want to share both personal experience and give you encouragement to go out and seek education after your military service. It is, to me, the very best benefit that a veteran can receive from the Veterans Affairs or anywhere else to include the home loan and the health care. So, I've often said you cannot oppress an armed educated population. All of us that go in the military get some type of weapons training, some type of combat training, and then there are people who are in units where there's a lot more combat training, so that's already checked. But the educated part is a little different. In the world we live in, having a, a high school diploma is not what it was 50 years ago. Now, college degrees, advanced degrees, certificates, uh, certifications, and lots of training is required to really succeed in, in most fields. So the, the Montgomery GI Bill was in place when I joined. We all had to contribute $100 a month at the end of your tour. You could go to college, you had 10 years to use it, and uh, they gave I'm going to say it was 10 times what you put in, 20 times what you put in, but it was a great program. What they found was very few people were using it. So after 9-11, they went to the post-9-11 GI Bill. The post-9-11 GI Bill does not require a, a contribution. However, it pays better. It sends your tuition directly to the school, and it gives you a monthly stipend based on a variable housing allowance and it is it is very good um, it is a way that you can not just go to to a traditional college you can go to to uh, mechanic training you can go to if you do it absolutely right you can get flight training you can do all sorts of things with it but I highly encourage people to go the route of a four-year school and if possible even on to a master's degree um, the, the next one I want to just touch on really quickly is V, R, and E. It's Veterans Readiness and Employment. So that was formerly Voc Rehab. It's been renamed. Voc Rehab had several tracks. V, R, and E also has several tracks. There's an education part and there's a job seeking part. If you're wanting the education, you may have to be very diligent and make a real case as to why you need that training. And it's for people with, with service-connected disabilities. The last one that I just want to touch on briefly is the survivor's benefit, and that's Chapter 35. If you're 100% dis disabled or if, God forbid, someone we know is... is uh, is lost in combat or, or dies in a training accident, the children of that person get 100% of their school paid for. Now, in all of these, there's some caveats. Uh, one is that they don't necessarily pay, pay the top price of a private school. So you may also have to seek out what's called a yellow ribbon. Yellow ribbon is basically a grant from the school that matches the, the funds of the GI Bills in order to, to 
meet their requirement for the cost of the school. Um, there's also a, uh, a thing called the VMET. It's, it's a uh, transcript that has your military training. Lots of schools, particularly community colleges, will give you credit for things that you've done in the military. Lots of schools also give you credit for what you've done in the military. Your training is valuable. Your education is valuable. If you can plan and bring all of it together, then you have one of the greatest benefits that allows you to take care of yourself into the future as a veteran. One of the things that I want to see for all veterans is a better life outside of the military than we had in. Although I loved being in the Army, I loved being out, and I hope to live longer than I was in. And with all of that being said, I hope the same for everyone else. Um, if you have questions, I am sending this out over Facebook uh, Messenger, and you should uh, you should uh, hit me up if you have questions. You can also go to your local American Legions, VFWs, DAVs. There, there are thousands of service organizations out there. There are thousands of agents out there that, that will help you. And every school has some type of veterans counselor, whether it's someone through the registrar, registrar's office, or if it's a bigger, bigger university, it may be a dedicated veterans advisor. Seek your education. It is such a great benefit, and I just want to thank you for letting me share with you for a little bit. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving. I will, uh, I will be on Friday again. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>